Sister, what's your name? My name's Courtney. Courtney, okay. So I hear you. Do you, do you understand what's coming out? Do you understand that your knowledge is actually bearing witness with what's written in this Bible? I understand. Okay. Personally, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God, but I do, I have been reading about, you know, our people, you know, okay. the hidden history of us, things that they've lied about. Everything that just came out this Bible that the soldier just read, you just bear witness to it. Okay. Get me Psalms 14, verse 1. Okay. Sister... These scriptures are for your edification. First of all, hold that, hold that, don't lose it. Hold that, get uh, Romans 15 and 4. This Bible is written for us to get an understanding of what's going on in today, about who we are, where we come from, who God is, okay? So now, I'm gonna let the Bible speak for itself and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna let it give you the understanding of its purpose and then I'm going to let it give you the understanding of what's going to happen to those who are not bearing witness to it, okay? So read that first, Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Say, whatsoever things were written aforetime, meaning before our time, the things that was written. This Bible, it was written before our time. Read. Were written for our learning. It was written for what? Our learning. This Bible was written for our learning. Our learning what? Our learning of our history. Our learning of our people. Our learning of our culture. So that we would not have to keep going through the same circles over and over and over. Okay? Let me show you what else it does. Read. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. That patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope might have hope might have hope at what might have hope at being able to endure this kingdom here that is shooting us down in the streets might be able to endure what a nation that despises you and hates you do you understand that courtney I understand. you understand that okay read that again from the top for whatsoever things were written aforetime we're written for our learning. This Bible, Courtney, is written for your learning. Brother, with the flyer there, with the family. You understand what we're going over? You understand this is your history, right? Come on over here and join, join your sister over here. This is edification for Israel, okay? You need to know this just as well as she needs to know this, okay? Read that again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So this Bible is being written for our learning. It is here to give us knowledge. It is here to give us wisdom. It is here to give us guidance through a world that does not like you, right. that does not care about you, and don't give two cents for you. This is your roadmap on how to be successful in this life. It tells you the beginning. It tells you what happened in your past. It tells you what's going to happen in your future. Right. Read. That we through patience, through patience, through patience, taking our time and letting the Bible be explained to us so that we can get the proper understanding. You took the time to go to school, right? You took the time to learn how to count, right? You took the time to learn how to do that so that could nobody mess over your money. You took the time to learn how to read. You took the time to learn how to write so that you could communicate. But the one thing that you did not take time in is learning who you are, where you came from, who created you. Okay? Because yes, we were over in Egypt, over in Kemet, but guess what? That is not your history. Right. That is the history that the same person that shoots you down in the streets wants you to believe. And the Bible tells you about that. The Bible tells you about everything that's going on today. If you take time to listen and get the message. If you take time to listen to the ones who are educated in this Bible. Do you understand that, brother? Do you understand that, sister? But didn't, okay. he use, but didn't that same person we're talking about use that Bible to justify keeping us in slavery? Yes. And lie to us with, and I know about mm -hmm. this Caesar Borgia. I saw this over exactly. here. Exactly. He is okay. the person who's used to show the image of Jesus. Exactly. Okay, we're going to cover that real quick. Just be patient with us, okay? We're going to cover that. All right? Finish that. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. It says that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now, 
Sister Courtney, you're bearing witness to this, so we're not going to pull that other scripture. Go ahead and drop that. Go into the Apocrypha in the book of Baruch and uh, get me where they paint the light, or Maccabees, where they painted the likeness of our images, 3 and 48. Okay? Sister Courtney, understand this. This Bible was only given to the Israelites. Right. This message of the Bible was only given to the Israelites. Salvation, the kingdom of heaven, and how to get to it. Eternal life, everlasting life, immortality. It is only given to the Israelites. You are supposed to have immortality, Courtney, but guess what? You will not get it if you are not paying attention, if you are not learning, and if you are not seeking the knowledge. So now let me show you what your enemies did to get you on the wrong path. Because that's where you're at right now. You're on the wrong path following something that your enemy has taught you. Let me show you what your enemy did in history. Read that. The book of 1 Maccabees out of the Apocrypha. Chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. Laid open the book of the law. The law is the Bible. Right. The heathen, the other nations who had our Bible, when they took us in slavery, they opened it and they read it. Let's see what they did when they understood what it was saying. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. To do what? Paint the likeness of their images. Your enemies, the ones who don't want to see you make it, took your Bible, took your inheritance, and they painted their pictures into it because they want to keep you asleep. That's because right. they want to keep you misled. Because they want to keep you thinking that there is no God when the whole world identifies with this Bible and everything that goes on in it. Give me Job chapter 9 verse 24. Let me show you what your enemies have done to you today, Courtney. Let me get you to understand that you need God on your side in order to make it through this system today. Read that. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It says the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Why is the earth given into the hands of the wicked? Because you would not follow God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That is the same scripture the soldier was bringing out to you, sister. Because you would not follow his law, statutes, and commandments in the past is the reason why you suffer. You're the last hire and the first fire today. Read it again. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. The reason why you don't have control over your families is because you broke God's laws in the past. The reason why your daughters are three blocks over prostituting themselves right now is because guess what? You broke God's laws in the past. You fell away from this Bible. But understand this, sister. You have a chance to repent. You are supposed to be here now rehearsing the righteous acts in order to get the salvation. Everybody wants an inheritance. Everybody wants to live forever. And everybody believes that they're going to make it through their own little specific journey. But that is not the case. Right. Give me Judges 5 and 11. The Most High God says he gave you one way to get into the kingdom everything that you have been looking for everything that you have been searching for is right here in this bible read they that are delivered from the noise of the archer say they that are delivered from the noise of archer now this is going into prophecy because guess what when you shoot an arch or an arrow it doesn't really make a noise so you've got to understand what this is talking about you have to have learned men in front of you leading and guiding you this is talking about the destruction that's going to hit this place delivered from the noise of archers the only ones that are going to be delivered is the ones that humble down and pay attention to what the scriptures are saying read they that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water in the places of drawing water that's talking about right here today in this land of captivity where you have to serve your enemies in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness you have to go to another nation for all things right. you want a driver's license go to your enemy you want an education go to your enemy you want a bank account go to your enemy and this enemy put a yoke iron on your neck he destroyed you he took you away from your inheritance that's why you can stand there today and tell me you don't believe in God. But yet, everything that comes out of your mouth is bearing witness with these scriptures. 
finish that. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. They shall what? Rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Sister Courtney, if you want to perfect something, you do it over and over and over again till you get it perfect, right? That's called rehearsal. You want to be rich. You're going to go out and you're going to do the things over and over that you need to do in order to succeed. But guess what? If nobody shows you, if nobody teaches you, or if somebody misinforms you, then you will never get it. You have to rehearse the righteous acts here today if you want to be able to survive later on. You understand that? I understand that. Yes. Okay. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Okay? Read that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. With all thy what? All thine heart. The Most High God says you need to trust in Him with all your heart. I'm not out here reaching to your feelings. I'm out here reaching for your common sense. Because for too long, we have been asleep in this land over here. You trust in the Lord with all of your common sense. You take what you know from history, and you let somebody open up the Bible along with you and teach you to give you the proper understanding. Okay? Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. And do what? And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't walk away from here thinking because I learned it in church, because you learn religion from the hands of your oppressors. The theologies that you think you have here, you went to their educational system to put it in your head. You don't have your own thoughts. The Most High God says, so do all of that. Come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Go to verse 31, 3 and 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. Do what? Envy thou not the oppressor. Says don't envy your oppressors. Don't be looking over here on these high rises thinking you need to be up there because they're living lavish and all fine and dandy. And when Christ returns, that's the end of their kingdom. Right. The kingdom that you need to be looking for is the kingdom that's coming. That's going to last forever. That's the kingdom you need. Well, I have some questions. Okay, now. hold on just a second. Let me finish this and we'll ask you a question. Read. And be thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Says choose none of his ways. None of his ways. None of his holidays. None of his traditions. None of his religions. None of his thoughts. You are to subdue everything you think you know about God or everything you think you know about this Bible and be retaught. That's John 6 and 63. You must be born again. Okay. Now, Sister Courtney, what is your question? Well, I had several. You just you said that black people are the, and among others I see on here, mm -hmm. are the descendants of the, we're the true Israelites, basically. Yes. One, first, first question, does that make us Jewish? Second of all, if we are the original Israelites, then who are those people over there now fighting Palestine? Okay, Three. now stop. Stop right there. Okay. Let me answer those two questions real quick. Bring it up. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. I'm going to show you the color of the Jews first. Okay? Read that. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourneth. It says Judah mourneth. Jew is short for Judah. That is the first tribe. That is God's pride. That is the so-called American blacks. That's right. Over here in this land today. So it says they mourn. What are we mourning for? We're getting shot down in the streets every other month or every other week now. You can turn on the news and hear about yourself getting shot down. That prophecy doesn't fit them. They're not mourning. We're the ones mourning. It says Judah mourneth, read. And the gates thereof languish. And the gates thereof what? Languish. Our leaders are famished. They're, they're done. They're toasted. Our guidance, our governments has been shut down and put away. We are languished. Read. They are black. They are white. Black. They are oriental. Black. They are black. So the Bible is telling you the original Jews, not the Jewish Jews, are black. That's right. Now, let's answer your second question about who are those over there that's calling themselves Jews. Revelations 2 and 9. Got it? Read. I know thy works. So this is Christ. 
speaking to John the revelator he says I know thy works he's talking to the churches which is Israel it says I know thy works read and tribulation and tribulations he knows the struggle that you have to go through today he knows the works that you have to put in read and poverty and poverty so Christ is talking to the Jews he said the Jews would be in poverty mm. now are the ones over there today calling themselves Jews in poverty no no so guess what they're not the Jews let's see who they are let's see who they are read I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich so he says you are rich because the inheritance of the kingdom to come is yours right, if you want. Right. read and I know the blasphemy you know what blasphemy is yes it's basically like you know like just saying bad stuff about uh, it's a bold faced lie against yeah. the word of God Thank that's what it is yeah. okay he says I know the blasphemy I know the lies of them which say they are Jews and are not. So he knows the, he says, I know the blasphemies of those that say they are Jews and they're not Jews. Let's see who they are. But are the synagogue of Satan. Are the synagogue of who? Of Satan. That's who they are over there. That whole group over there that's calling themselves the Jews now that says they, they, they claim that land in the year 1948. They are the synagogue of Satan. That's who they are. That answers your question. That's coming strictly out of God's word. That's not our private interpretation. You can pick up the Bible and read this and understand it on your own. That's right. Okay. What's your next question, sis? Well, my next question was, you said that the Bible comes from us and that they took it. Yes. What if, okay, and as you know, the people that are over there, the Jewish people nowadays, they have the Talmud. What is that? What exactly is that supposed to be like? The Talmud is them trying to simply rewrite this, okay? The original Bible, the 1611 King James, that's what was translated, okay? When Christ walked the face of the earth, all they had was the Old Testament and the Torah, which was the first five books of the Bible here. Okay, so now what those fake Jews have done over there, after reading this and understanding that they don't have any salvation, they go to cry to cover up to make lies. So they come out with their own book and they try to force it down your throat and make you say, well, this is God's law here. Well, guess what? This doesn't line up with the Bible. The same with the Quran? The, the, exact, also the, the exact same thing with the Quran. Because guess what? All of them are in cahoots. Get me Psalms 83 real quick. All the other nations outside of Israel, they are all on one accord to keep you sleep and away from this Bible. Okay? Read that. Psalms 83 and 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Says your enemies, more than one, your enemies have made a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And those that hate you the same ones that shoot you down in the street, the same ones that give you the worst paying jobs and the worst education and the worst family living circumstances, they have lifted up the head against you. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken crafty counsel. Meaning what? They went among themselves and decided to have a secret meeting without you without your knowledge, without your understanding. Let's see what they'd say. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They said what? Let us cut them off from being a nation. They don't want you to know who you are. Because God says once you learn that you're Israel, once you're able to apply the law, statutes, and commandments, you are rebuilding your nation. They don't want that. Because your heaven, under God's rulership, is their hell. Because they have to pay for all the things that they have done against you. Everything. Everything. They have done things to you that you couldn't even fathom. The, the scripture says what? They took crafty counsel. You know what they did? They sit up at night and they try to think of ways to keep you in sin. There, there you go. They develop think, ta uh, think tanks. They do these things to keep you away from the knowledge of this Bible. Because as long as you stay away from this Bible, they stay in rulership. 
As long as you walk around here saying that there's no God, they continue living the life of luxury and you continue being down here in anguish and pain, having to live from paycheck to paycheck. You stay in slavery while they stay in rulership and live luxury. But God says when he turns, he's going to change those things. They're going to pay for the things that they did. Matter of fact, drop that, go to Revelation 13. Okay. They have to pay for the things that they've done to us as his people. You understand that? So you know about you know about slavery, right? You know it happened, right? So let's see what the Bible says concerning what they did to us in slavery. Listen to what's coming. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity. Who led the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans into captivity? White man and the Arabs. Exactly. White man and the Arabs. And guess who else? The Japanese and the Chinese and the Africans. Oh well, yeah, the Africans I knew. Yes. Guess what? All of them led us into captivity. Start there from the beginning. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity. Shall go into captivity. Do they have a choice to go? Shall go into captivity. No, 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 no. I'm blessed and saved and washing the blood. Shall go into captivity. Your enemies took your Bible, took your history. They opened it up and they read that scripture. Right. They understood what it was saying. Read it one more time, and then I'm going to let you explain it. Read it. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity. Shall go into captivity. What is that scripture saying? Those who put you into slavery, they will go into slavery themselves in the end exactly. time. Exactly. And guess what? That will come to pass. That's right. That's right. It didn't say maybe. It didn't say if. It will come into pass. Just like your spirit was able to bear spirit with the things in this Bible that you were talking over ago. Just like it identifies with slavery. Guess what? It's going to identify with future prophecy. They are going to go into slavery. They are going to be paid back for the things that they have done to us as God's chosen people. Do you understand? Drop that. Give me Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. Now I'm going to give you the prophecy on it to let you know what is going to happen because everything in the Bible matches up. The problem is nobody has taken the time to teach you how to understand the Bible. That's right. And that's why you have those thoughts in your head saying that there is no God because nobody has taken the time to properly guide you through. But today is your day to get some understanding. Okay. Read that. Start at verse 1. The book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 14 and 1. But the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Jacob is the forefather of those 12 tribes. Read. And will yet choose Israel. And he will choose Israel. This is when he returns. Let's see what's going to happen. And set them in their own land. And set them in our own land. Because right now you're in your land of captivity. When Christ returns, you're going to your own land. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And all those other nations that's going to see this are going to try to join with you. Because they understand the prophecy about what's to happen. Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And they are going to cleave to us when Christ comes to redeem us. They're not going to try to part ways. They're going to cleave to us. They don't want to see us go nowhere. They're going to be begging to stay with us. Let's see what's going to happen. And the people shall take them. And the people shall take them. Read. And bring them to their place. Read. And the house of Israel. And the house of Israel. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The ones who have served in nothing but slavery since the day that they broke God's laws. Read. Shall possess them in the land of the Lord. Shall what? Possess them in the land of the Lord. For what? For servants and handmaids. He who leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Right, right. It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. And Sister Courtney, you need to be on the right side with the right frame of mind, rehearsing the righteous acts in order to inherit this, in order to receive this. Because guess what? 
If you don't, there's only one thing waiting for you, and that is judgment. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.